Welcome in to the Inside Columbia Basketball Podcast presented by Vandewater. I'm one of your co-hosts, Kyle Matrician, joined this week by Mike Kowalski. We're sorry in advance to all of our listeners. We do not have the famous Patrick Desir uh, on this week. Uh, we know we're going to lose a lot of listens because of that. So please bear with us. We will try to do our best. Uh, we will try and bring Pat- Patrick back as, as soon as possible. Yeah, sorry you got to see me again this week. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get a lot of we're gonna get a lot of uh, mail in our mailbox for the podcast. You know, just asking for Pat back. We know, so uh, be back soon. He'll be back soon. He will be back soon. But who do we got coming up today, Mike? So we have Cam Shockley, OKK, and Emmanuel Onyuama, sophomores from the men's basketball team. Last week we couldn't get in touch with with any men's members of the men's team because uh, they were busy starting phase athletic activity, which we'll hear about after break when we talk to them. Um, so we were letting them get everything organized with their schedule last week. So we left it to the women and that was good. Good podcast, Kyle. Way to go. Good fun. Good fun with the women. I thought the, the Spanish quiz was fun uh, that Marion Page did. So that's online in our social media platforms. If anybody missed that and wants to check that out. And uh, next week, we'll have a combo podcast again. This is just men's basketball this week. But next week, we'll be back uh, with the other two freshmen from the women's basketball team, Nicole Stevens and Eden Gaynor. And then, Mike, I know we got a bunch of – I don't know. How many how many juniors we got next week? All juniors to talk to, and then we'll talk to the seniors to wrap up the season of the Inside Columbia Basketball podcast. I can't believe – That's right. I believe I mean, this is episode eight. eight. I know. It doesn't feel like, doesn't feel like uh, it's been as long as it has. But then again, I feel like for some reason the pandemic doesn't feel like we're coming up on like – we're getting really close to the, the year date where we all got sent home. And it is crazy to think – it is crazy, absolutely crazy to think about that. It is. Um, but anyway – Got a good episode for you this week, uh, so we're gonna head to break. Uh, we gotta pay some bills. We gotta we gotta pay. Uh, oh, I'm losing it in the background. This is my Coke can. There it is. Gotta pay some bills. Gotta get some sponsor ads in there. And uh, when we come back, we will have Cam Shockley, OKK, and Emmanuel Onuama. I got that right. Uh, on with us. So stick around. They say you play basketball, you play football, you play tennis, but you can't play boxing. You have to fight. I remember the night where it went completely downhill. It was a massive tumor that had wrapped itself around my spine. Dr. Hartle, who was my surgeon, you know, he aced it. They resurrected me. On August 9th, 2014, I became the WBA middleweight champion of the world. John, we're outside of JAG1. Tell us why this place is so important to your patients. We're serving New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania as an outpatient physical therapy and occupational therapy center. We've worked very hard in the last two years to bring us close to 100% in network in all our facilities. We treat every type of pathology and illness and surgical intervention, taking that patient's needs and building the rehab program around that goal and attaining the goal. Welcome back. We're joined now by Emmanuel Onyuama and Cam Shockley OKK, uh, sophomores on the men's basketball team. Guys, thanks so much for taking some time today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So obviously- Wait, Mike, before you start, I want to bring up something that our viewers should know. And Cam and Emmanuel know it, but I just got to say, Happy birthday! Birthday! birthday. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't see it right now. But there's balloons and confetti dropping on his video everywhere. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. But it's all. It's all there. It's this whole cell of confetti cannons. I think are going on right now. Live recording. Guys, <laughs> happy birthday! Yeah, happy birthday, man! Then it should be a good year. I secretly told Cam and uh, Emmanuel before we started. That's what that's what I needed a minute before before we started. So. Okay. Look at you. Now yeah. you know. Pretty slick there, Kyle. So let's turn the attention back to you guys. Why people are actually listening? They don't need to hear about our personal lives and everything. So they do, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but for the reason we're here. For the you know. So since we have Cam and Emmanuel on, we'll okay. talk a little bit. So it's been a little bit of a big week for you guys. You guys were able to start phased athletic activity, uh, do some some group workouts in Dodge for the first time. So why don't you let everybody know how that's been going uh, this first week uh, of getting back together? 
Yeah, so it's been going pretty well so far. We've had a couple lifts with our strength and conditioning coach, Tommy. So, you know, it's been good seeing my teammates, seeing a lot of the freshmen too, because I haven't really been able to see them besides the Zoom meeting. So it was good to interact with them, start that relationship with the younger guys and also keep working with the older guys. And of course, Emmanuel and my other sophomore uh, class members. Emmanuel, t tell everybody what it's, what kind of like the protocols are for you guys to be able to, to get into Dodge and work out. What do you guys have to do and how is it structured when you guys get into uh, the weight room? Oh yeah, it's been, it's been pretty like straightforward. We just have to get tested twice a week. You know, everyone on campus has to get tested twice a week. And um, we usually lift in the morning at seven o'clock. So you get up, do your green pass, which is, you know, for to be allowed access, you have to like do your green pass. And once you get in there, get in the Dutch, scan your ID and you're good to go. And you just have to social distance in the weight room. And um, Tommy does a good job of like explaining stuff and making sure everyone follows like the rules and stuff. So yeah, we just, we go in there, we do what we have to do, we leave. It's been, it's been pretty smooth so far. It's crazy to think we're almost a year into this pandemic. And I was telling some other coworkers and everything that, you know, I've, I've worked the shift at Dodge for, for the general students that are working out in the blue gym and everything. Everything feels strangely normal going back. Like, you know, even though everybody's wearing masks and socially distant, like there's some sort of like familiarity of like actually like engaging and, and seeing other people. Do you guys feel the same way right now? Or is it, is it a little bit different still? Oh, definitely. I mean, for me, this morning we had our, our lift. So just walking through the uh, doors and Dodge, just it felt like I was coming back home, you know, just it felt very normal just to be back in that environment. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I agree with Cam. To be honest, like the protocols don't even I don't even feel it anymore. I know it's kind of weird to say, like, you know, being just seen being around the guys being in the weight room, just feels normal and just glad to be back in there. So let's look back a little bit at last year. What was it like for you guys as first years? What is the biggest, what are the, some of the biggest takeaways for you both uh, as you're moving forward? And what do you think you learned that can help you for next season even? Start with you, E. Um, yeah, I mean, freshman year, a lot of ups and downs. Cam, Cam knows how it goes. You know, you come in as a new guy, everything is new. You got to kind of get accustomed to to how stuff works around here. And I thought it was I thought it was a great, great learning like year for me. You know, I thought I got I got to understand what the program is about, got to got to know the guys better, got to know what it takes to play at this level. And um moving forward, it just now I'm I'm a sophomore, I have to be a leader. There are new guys who you know, on the team, younger guys have to set a good example for them. I think that's kind of what I'm leaning towards this year. Just, you know, now that I already know how things go, just stick to it, you know, uphold our team team goals and, you know, just be a good example for the younger guys and, you know, get, get us some wins. No, I definitely agree with that. I mean, coming from high school, you definitely see from the first day of practice, how a coach wants to set the standard for the team, how the seniors want to set the standard for the team, and just that attention to detail, like every day, every day, single day of practice, you know, like it's a long season. We start, what, in October, November, and we don't end till March or so. So you got to stay, you got to stay focused through that whole time. And now, like he said, like we're sophomores this year, when we start playing next year, we'll be juniors. So we're now the vets on the team, we got to set that standard for the younger guys. So I'm excited to do that. I think he is too. So we're looking forward to that. What do you think's going to be one of the biggest challenges when you do come back? Because you're, you're going to basically have two classes of, of players that haven't played college basketball before, right? So you two, as part of the upperclassmen ranks next year, like, I mean, how many guys, I don't even know how many guys that's going to be in total at this point. Uh, like you're going to basically have, a whole team of guys when maybe in scrimmage or practice or something who have played and a whole team of guys who haven't. So what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for you as upperclassmen to teach them? Um, I think the biggest challenge would just be, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not easy to, you know, come from high school and the transition is, is kind of a big step. So the biggest challenge is just to make sure everyone's on the same page every time and make sure everyone locks in in every practice. Cause that's, 
you know, it's easy to pay attention for a few days, you know, when things get started. But then, you know, when things don't go your way, you tend to, you know, do stuff differently. So for the new guys, the biggest the biggest thing will be to just stick to it no matter what. And it's up to us as the upperclassmen to let them know that, like let them know that this is a long process and it's not going to be easy. Just stick to what we're about and we're going to be fine. No, definitely. I think one thing we talk a lot about is having culture. And, you know, like we see like our lifts now and half the team hasn't played in a Columbia jersey before. Next year is going to be even more so like that. So having us as like juniors and seniors, it's really important for us to set what like that culture is and show everyone what the values of this team are and have it play out between what our sophomores and freshmen, you know, like you're not always going to have a great day of practice. Some days you'll have some up days, like you were saying, some days you'll have some up days, some days you'll have some down days, but just staying like, what is it, diligent in uh, your work just will help out in the long run for us and like for yourself and for the team. When the two of you were freshmen, is it, is, do you feel like there's one game in the season where or one practice or one moment where something clicks uh and you're like oh wow like i've got to make sure i do this like to be a better player and all of a sudden you felt more comfortable on the college basketball floor or is it more when the season's over and everything's in all the culmination of the season and the practices you look back at the talent that you, you felt like you had coming in and you just realize how much better off you are now Well, for me, it was three different spots. I would say the first spot came where we had, I think, a three-game swing at the beginning of the year where it was we played Wake one week, and then I think we might have played a game in between. I think we played Binghamton, then we played UVA. Playing at Wake and UVA were two great experiences, and they're both very great teams, of course, in the ACC. And just seeing, like, how those teams play and, like, how we have to – what that standard is to play against them helped me out in terms of like what intensity I need to bring to pack practice to be like on that level. So our team can be on that level. And then the second spot was we get what about two weeks during winter break between games. I think our last game was December 28th. And our next game was what January 9th. We have a lot of practices there. You're not playing as much. You're not really focused on games. You're more so focused on that next practice. And that allows like the team to kind of regroup and see what we have to do before our Ivy league. Then of course, as you were saying that, third part would be after the season just seeing like how the season went how like I played on my teammates played just seeing what we need to get better but get better at what we need to improve on so that that was what it was for me yeah I definitely agree with Cam I feel like it wasn't like a one-time thing for me it was more like as time went on I kept on seeing like oh wow this is how it's done like when we played those ACC teams and you see how how those guys play and you, you know, you see how, even in our practices, you see how the upperclassmen play and you're, when you come in as a, as a freshman, you know, you expect something to go this way, but then you realize that, okay, this is what it takes to play at this level and stuff like that. So you, it's like a slow process of like realizing it. And then of course, like after the season, you know, you look back and you look at how you started. Like for me personally, I look back and you know, like, the type of player I was coming in and the type of player I was when the season ended. And, you know, there's a big difference in like in terms of my mental and my physical just, you know, got better, got stronger. I also got like more knowledge of the game. So, yeah, it's it's definitely at different points in, in during the year. Where do you think both of you have improved the most in your skill development this this last year? I know it's been a little bit difficult to get a lot of the training in, but what, where do you think you're you're better off at now than you were at the end of last season? Um, I'll say for me personally, I my skill level definitely definitely got better. I feel like on the court, like things that involve like stuff we do on the court, I feel like. I have a better understanding of the spacing at the college level, but like in high school, I didn't quite understand like, you know, spacing and stuff. So that's what coach like was trying to tell me like all through last year. And I, it finally stuck and I kind of understand like where to be in, you know, positions that's like better to be at, to, you know, make sure our team is more successful and off the court. I feel like, there's a I put I put more emphasis on the mental part of the game now, you know, like previously, like when I was younger, I, 
you know, I didn't prepare my mind like to come to practice or for games or for film sections or for, you know, all that kind of stuff. But after after a while in college, I kind of, you know, I feel like I've gotten better at like preparing my mind for what's to come and like being mentally ready. I agree. Like that mental part is huge, huge at the college level and like all these higher levels because everybody's talented. So you got to find that edge and a lot of that can come from that mental side. I'd say for me, um, I don't know. I think of myself as a fairly uh, what versatile player, which can help our team out a lot. So just thinking about how our team did at the end of the year and just seeing what our team needed to improve on. I thought one thing we could improve on was shooting. So I just worked a lot on just getting a lot of three point shots up, getting to like certain spots in the court and just working on that. Cause I think that's something that our team could help out from a big amount next year. Uh, Cam, you and I have been talking a lot uh, this week. You've been kind of spearheading this social media campaign for black history month. Uh, for those that aren't following one, I'll let you t tell people about it so they can uh, check it out if they haven't seen it already. Yeah, so what I thought of, uh, ran it by a couple of our seniors and a couple of my teammates, and they were interested in it. Basically, a lot of our, um, a lot of the black members on our team, we wanted to talk about certain black figures that motivated us or inspired us to get to the point we are. We are, you know, I chose to talk about Miles Davis because he's a jazz musician, and uh, I play the jazz piano. So the way he mu motivated me through music helped me. Uh, inspired me not just in music but also in life and basketball as well so I thought it was interesting to have other members of the team talk about people that inspired them so that's just something we've been doing a bit uh, during the month of February. How much jazz piano do you play? I feel like this is an interesting fact. Oh yeah so gosh I've been playing piano since first grade or so but I didn't really start taking a liking to it till I'd say seventh or eighth grade so what is that about six seven years now so yeah, I have a little, I'm in my dorm room right now and I have a little keyboard on my desk that I like play on a couple times in the day and all that. So it's been fun. Can you give us a little demonstration right now? Right now? Let, yeah. Let's, let's see. Let's do it. <laughs> give us, give us like just 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, we can hear that good. Yep. Right, let's see if my computer stays up while I play this. So this is uh Sunny by, originally by Bobby Hebb back in, I think the seventies or so. All right. and this jazz musician Oscar Peterson did his own kind of uh, rendition on it so I'm going to play that I don't know if it's going to come across the podcast as well as yeah, that's uh, another thing. To, but it it's impressive to me. It sounded good to me. E, yeah. your take. E, review right now. Amazing, amazing. That's <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. That was that was the first. That was the first on our podcast. The uh, any musical instrument being played. Cam <laughs> Shockley, okay, K. You get you get to your name up on the board of firsts. Oh, I love the Inside it. I love Columbia it. Basketball Podcast. <laughs> any musical towns for you, E? Ah, he can I sing think. a little bit. He can I sing a little bit. Oh, he can sing. Well, he sang in the locker room, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's right. <laughs> I, didn't say well. I didn't say well, but he he sings. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, say you I, didn't I, say I, well. I was going to ask who's a better singer, Ike or E. Oh, no. I'm definitely a better singer, but, I mean, just... <laughs> Just leave it at that. I I played I played a little bit of saxophone in high school, but not just for like a year, not nothing crazy. Oh, I was gonna say I played this. I played the alto. I don't know what kind of sax. What saxophone did you play? Tenor sax. I sorry, I, I didn't hear you there. I say I played tenor sax. Tenor. Yeah, oh, three of us played saxophone. I played as well. I played alto oh. and tenor. Oh, look at Mike. He got both of them. Got to get a well, little. We're just gonna this whole podcast. I actually have my old alto saxophone in the other room. It probably does not work. <laughs> it probably does not work. <laughs> I'll say it for next time. I'm gonna start a band. If you guys want to follow us, we'll, we'll let you know. When One day, somebody's gonna turn on the podcast and it's just gonna be like a jazz concert. <laughs> a a keyboard, little jam session going on. Keyboard and alto. I, Cam will be on the keyboard. I'll be on the alto. Mike's on the tenor, and E's singing. <laughs> and that's our whole band. That's our whole band. That's all you need. That's all you need. Little quartet. <laughs> Yeah. 
We all know what comes with being a fan, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. Share a Coke with a friend. Coca-Cola, the official beverage of the Columbia Lions. At Athletic Brewing Company, we've built America's first craft non-alcoholic brewery. We've created a lineup of award-winning non-alcoholic beers. Our beers are made with organic grains and start at only 50 calories. Athletic beers are perfect for anyone who loves being healthy and active, but also loves to enjoy a great tasting beer with friends. To give us a try, go to athleticbrewingcompany.com and use code ATHLETIC20 for 20% off your first order. Cam, I mean, it's, you, you're you, you're aspiring jazz musician, kind of, but with your playing. Do you listen to WKCR a lot when, the, when they're playing the jazz music? I've actually listened to it a bit. I only found out about it maybe a month or two ago, but when I did, I definitely had to check it out. So, no, I mean, I love listening to jazz music, especially, like, when I'm doing homework because that takes up a lot of time in my day. So I'll be able to listen to a lot of jazz standards, a lot of jazz music like that. So a short story to kind of tie this all together. Um WKCR does a lot of, it's a student run uh, radio station. They play jazz music. They also cover sporting events too, when they have a chance and everything. But um, when baseball won its third straight Ivy league championship in 2015, they did this, they do this like weekly sports talk show called the roaring lion or the firing lion or one of those two. I should get that right. But um, they invite members of the baseball team who had just won. They're getting ready to go to regionals uh, to the NCAA tournament. And they interrupted miles davis's birthday celebration on wkcr and the amount of phone calls people were right like sending into the radio station was outrageous like every commercial break the dj had to answer the phone and like i'm sorry he'll the, the celebration will kick off in like 30 more minutes like they were people <laughs> upset that they were not listening getting more miles davis and the columbia baseball players were on the air it was a really funny story we were just kind of sitting there like laughing about it <laughs> crazy people are passionate no, no, Miles is great. So I, I might be a little heated too. <laughs> no, I definitely, definitely support Columbia baseball. I'm not going to let E get away this easily. E, are you not going to hit a note for us right now? Ooh, don't pull me. Just don't maybe, me. maybe like one note. Well, any other hidden talents? Huh? Any other hidden talents? It Mike's going nice. to let you slip away here. Does, does, does um, playing video games count? Because. <laughs> I'm nice at 2K. <laughs> hey, if we if we get if we can get 2K up on the Twitch channel channel soon enough, uh, we know we know who to ask. Hey, 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 get me and Cam on the stick so I can just you know embarrass Cam. It's just I'm, I'm gonna stay with the keyboards. I'm not a big video game guy. I'll let you e handle that. Well, there was a little rivalry there. I was gonna ask. <laughs> no, Cam just laid down immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know I know which battles to pick to pick a fight in, but that's not one of them. So yeah, among the gamers, like who's your toughest competition? Uh I mean some of the guys like Cam doesn't play. I know Ike doesn't play. Um I don't know about the fresh I know Josh for the freshman class. I know Josh is really good. He played a couple times. And um Asa, Asa is probably the the biggest competition because he yeah, I don't he beat me all the time in 2K and <laughs> I mean, I don't really play Call of Duty, so yeah, that's probably I'll, I'll give it to Asa. So, do you guys like do little tournaments amongst yourself, or do you guys just do one on one? Like, have you ever like done a team tournament or anything like that? Um, they do. They our teammates do. They do like um, Call of Duty, Warzone, like you know, like they, stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't. I don't play Warzone, so it's more like two K one on one stuff. So, yeah. We do. Wait, yeah. What? What? Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was saying one thing where some of the my teammates have been trying to get into is uh, chess. I don't know if uh, any of my we, teammates talked about that. We've reached out to Maka. We, yeah, we're Maka trying to set up. We're trying to set up a chess tournament on the. Yeah, Twitch we're, we're we're still trying to. You know, it's a little difficult, but that, that's something of a bunch of my guys are a bunch of the guys are still interested in doing. So if we can. Do either of you play? I play. I play. Right. I play. I used to play a lot. Cam plays chess on his phone, like during road trips. Oh yeah, me, me and the trainer, uh, Sammy yeah, used to play against. Play against him. Sammy, I've seen him play on his phone. Yeah, yes. so he, he he's beaten me once. I think I've beaten him maybe fifteen times or so. That's not too important, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too important. We just wanted to throw that in there, though. Just just for the record. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> who's the best? Who's the best chess player? I might have to take that. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll find out. Hopefully soon enough, we'll find out. I'm going to have to prove that, but I think right now I might have that that title. 
E, no chess for you? No chess for me, man. Do you know how chess works? I know how it works. Just have, have you work. tried? Have you tried? I always, I tend to lose a lot. So I just stay away, stay away from chess. I don't check. I'm more of a checkers guy. Check. Yeah. Checkers. I, I like them. <laughs> that's, that's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we have the checkers tournament, we'll be sure to uh, have you back. The other half you can do checkers. Yeah. The team, the guys that don't do chess. Uh, yeah, if, he, if checkers, yeah. I'm in there. So checkers, I'm, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be there. You guys will just take over the whole channel. <laughs> Mike, Mike kind of hit on this a second ago, but uh, like hidden talent besides the gaming portion of it. I mean, I know we, you know, Cam, you got the piano, E, you sing a little bit, even though you still refuse to sing for us on this podcast right now. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna try it a few more times before we go. Maybe, maybe you can, like, maybe you can sing us out at the end and we'll see if you muster up the courage you know that'd be great i mean we'll see, we'll we see. we when we had who did we have on here mike that said uh he i think it was one of the freshmen that said uh he did music and he said he would make a podcast theme for us oh it was kobe it was kobe so he makes oh, yeah, kobe, let's do music. kobe into it yeah he said uh so he's part of the band too which yep. he can be part of he he's gonna like do the electronic part, you know. Is the engineering side? Yeah, yeah. Cam, Cam, Cam can make beats too. I bet you guys don't know that Cam Cam makes oh, yeah, beats. I do. I do make actual like pieces and stuff. I'm gonna have to show you guys sometime because that's not that's not copyrighted. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that. we can have all sorts of things. We can have a new theme song for this podcast. We the can first- have like a little <laughs> intro out, like you know, between break and uh, commercial music and stuff like that. We got options. We got options. Yeah. Very talented team besides basketball. <laughs> hey, Cam, Cam, what about soccer? We got a. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do a lot of a lot of soccer players or former soccer players on the team. How many you guys, guys do you guys play FIFA? I do. I, that's one of the few video games I do play. Do, does anybody do, do a decent amount of guys on the team? Play? Because we can have a FIFA tournament more immediate than we can have a 2K tournament with basketball team. Mm-hmm. FIFA, uh, Asa, Asa plays a little bit of FIFA, I'm yeah. sure. I'm oh, uh, I'm pretty sure Maka plays as well, and Cam and me, so that's four. I don't know. We can maybe all the guys get it. Four is enough. Four is enough. Wow. Should you guys get it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're just we're just scheduling content on this podcast. This is actually a meeting oh, to so schedule funny. Twitch content. This is the podcast <laughs> is over. All right, one more question on the, the gaming. E, what teams do you play with on 2K and FIFA? Oh, okay. 2K, 2K. I know a lot of people are gonna say this is cheating, but 2K, I use I use the Sixers because you know Ben Simmons is unstoppable, and B is a force in the paint. You know, I I've started using um the Pelicans just because I like that Lonzo, Lonzo Balzai on combo there, and you know right. got him on the wing, so that's kind of like a balanced team. And for FIFA, I tend to use my favorite team, Manchester United, although they're not like too great. I get work sometimes when I use Manchester United, but I mean, I stick, I, I, I'm loyal, so I'll stick to my team. I mean, Manchester United isn't so good anymore, but they used to be good. Oh, oh wait, no, you see, you don't, you don't want to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> number, number two on the table. So. Uh, it's not going to last long. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. How do you feel? How do you feel about, I got, I wish, you know, I should know his name. The man, the new manager, he's been there for like two years now. Oh, he's, he's great. He's great. I mean, we're, we're second on the table. I mean, I know, uh, guys won't be there for too long. It's fine. Oh, oh Cam, Cam, you got a team? Who's oh, gonna- Liverpool since since I was eight years old. Liverpool. Well, Cam's still in celebration mode. He's got Liverpool. Liverpool. He's still celebrating he's that. Struggling a bit, but I, I'm fine. We we won so many tournaments. We need to give other people chances. <laughs> you won, Cam. You won like a decade ago, bro. You, you, you mean like last year? Last year they won the title. Come on. Last year oh, was, oh, the bro. reigning champs for the first time since Cam's been alive. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> last year was the first time in a while. <laughs> uh, that's all right, guys. I uh, I just got into EPL a few years ago, and I root for Wolverhampton. So, so we're, we've been pretty decent. We've been pretty decent since we moved up. So, I'm not having a great year this year. Mm-hmm. You guys don't care, so we don't have to talk about it. It's fine. <laughs> different different levels to it. It's fine. There's just yeah, yeah. They're just not in the top six. It's just not. <laughs> it is it is funny seeing how like if you get into EPL or 
your league and all that stuff, like how different it is. Like, you know, if it's, you know, you're, you're, you want to win the championship, but getting top four is like, you know, a huge achievement when you're getting to the champions league and stuff like that. And like, you can see teams like strategizing for that and then managing, you know, the NBA is trying to get into this like whole like in season tournament stuff too, but it's, it's kind of, you know, interesting how popular that's become in the States now. And then how American sports might end up, you know, going that route. If the NBA, you know, once the pandemic ends, if the NBA goes that route next season. Yeah. Don't let Mike fool you. Don't let Mike fool you either. He roots for Chelsea. So. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know about that. But. <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna make any friends over here, I guess. But uh, All right, well, that's fine. There's, there's some inter inter team rivalries going on. <laughs> We're getting our way back. Big Champions League win yesterday. Oh, anybody he pays, atten- he pays attention gonna... more than I think he does. Honestly, I don't think he paid attention to it that much. And then he like hit me with a text once in a while, and I'm like, I, I didn't even. I I I just thought maybe you have looked once in a while. Well, I, with the for the pandemic, I have more time. They're playing, that's true. They're playing like Lissick. an open day game. My TV is right here, so I just throw it on in the background. So, are you with uh, with Stanley behind you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys know what that background was, right? Or no? Did, did, did it just come to life? He's yeah, it's from the office. <laughs> did he move? I've seen him move a couple of times. Right? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like a it's a moving background. Right? Cool. It yeah. is moving, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a ten minute. Yeah. 10 minute loop yeah oof <laughs> yep yeah i just googled it i was looking for once i got my computer upgraded i looked for like fun zoom backgrounds and this one popped up and i downloaded it I just went for it. cool cool it's a great uh, show it's a great show i feel like a lot of people are watching it again now that uh peacock came out do you guys have peacock tv it's like a new, it's a new streaming service it's a NBC, it's nbc's version of a streaming service and they said they have the office on there and they, that's where they put EPL now, most EPL. And there's like one game a week on, or maybe a couple, one there's, game a day okay. on NBC Sports well, Network. Well, Saturdays and Sundays, they have like two two or three games, but then yeah. everything else gets shifted. Because they were putting everything on like USA Network and like all the other, like CNN. Yeah. Even. And now it's like, if they're not on NBC Sports or NBC. You know what's, you know what's funny is if you like go on social media sometimes and you if you like search this there's people in the uk excuse me who are like genuinely upset because they have the same rules in the uk like we do for the nfl where you kind of only get that one game a day and they can't there's no way for them to be able to watch the other games whereas like us in the united states we can pretty much watch any game we want uh and we can have them all up at the same time on the streaming service and they like wish they had that so badly and I, maybe the rules are reversed over there too for the nfl maybe they can just watch whatever nfl game they want all you know have them all up at the same time yeah that must be tough because there are a lot of games going on in the epl uh, yeah. second division on the weekends like all the games are basically played at the same like there's, not, the same like, there's not like an epl package though like i feel like they go to bars and stuff and the, I, they, sure. yeah but they can't i don't know i don't i don't know exactly the logistics of it i just know i've seen tweets where and then like, they're all upset about it especially because they couldn't go to games like that's what was where it was really becoming an issue yeah no, um, because they would black out the games because they want people to go to the games yeah. and they have so many they have so many like so many games besides epl like the, the lower divisions like it's like in every city you go to there's a game on, on there's a game happening so rapid fire mike's bringing back well i kind of brought it back last week i thought it was good yeah he threw me on the spot i wasn't prepared for rapid fire this week but i you know if if truth be told i i kind of just made it up as i went along last week so that's fine i can do it again so rapid fire guys this is how this is gonna work i'm gonna ask you a question might be about yourself it might be about your teammate that's on this podcast with you right now but I just wanted you to give me the first response that comes to mind. I'm going to try not to elaborate on anything. I might ask you a follow-up question on one of those answers, but I'm just going to let it ruminate and let everybody listening make their own interpretations as to your, what your answer was. I'm going to start with Cam, since we have uh, talking about games and stuff. And I'm not going to ask, I'm going to try not to ask either of you the same question so that you can't prepare an answer. All right, Cam, rapid fire. Question one. If you could be on any game show, what game show would it be? Ooh, definitely have to be Family Feud so I could get that redemption. (laughs) (laughs) 
yeah, I definitely take Family Feud. That's definitely a good time. And that, that show is always funny. Who would who would you take on Family Feud with you? Oh my gosh! Um, you had to pick. You had to pick. You had to pick four other people because you get in a real Family Feud, you get a team of five. On my team or outside? Yeah, anybody in your life who's going on Family Feud with you? Gosh, all right. So, because E's here, I have to say E just because just because he's here. Um, who else? Uh, Luke Bolster is pretty knowledgeable. Um, gosh. Uh, one of my friends who's also a sophomore, Johnny, also very knowledgeable. And let's say, let's say Ike, Ike Nweke, one of the juniors. I think that'd be a pretty knowledgeable, but also funny squad. So <laughs> be, be pretty good entertainment. You know, Cam, if, if you if you got to be thinking, you got Mike Kowalski sitting here as your SID. That is true, I mean, gosh. I didn't, I didn't he nominates people for the awards over here. I didn't think Mike was eligible. <laughs> That's on me. I thought I said, it was anybody in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. Just messing with you. All right. Your, uh, your favorite NBA player. Favorite NBA player? Yeah. Of uh, all current time. or retired? Of all time. Of all time. Dwayne Wade, because he was the first basketball player I ever saw play back in, gosh, 06, maybe, when he had that whole tear to the finals. The biggest inspiration in your life? Biggest person. inspiration, my mother. You know, like, um, she means everything to me, so definitely her. All right. That was rapid fire with Cam. Now we're going to switch over to E. E, you ready? I'm not, I'm not going to ask you the same questions. Maybe, maybe one of them will be the same, but generally I try not to ask the same questions here. All right. When you were 10 years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, that's easy. An astronaut. I wanted to go to... You, I, the astronaut, huh? Yeah, I wanted to go, go on a spaceship and just cruise around the galaxy, you know? <laughs> Any aspirations of that still or no? Nah, that's, that's the only way. <laughs> <laughs> just on the basketball floor when you take off for a dunk, right? That's, that's the only time. That's... <laughs> how, far, how far can you take off from? If you uh, going straight at the basket, pretty far. I I got I got long strides and long reach, so yeah, pretty far. Can you have a heel on the free throw line when you take off? Heel on the free throw line or no? Maybe maybe a little bit inside, you know. To be honest, <laughs> like just just clipping it on the back heel. Yeah, just, just still oh, a little inside it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't hurt yourself, please. Don't try it in practice. <laughs> I don't I don't need that on me. All right, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Cam. Biggest inspiration in your life. Has to be my mom. I mean, there's no other. There's no other answer. It's, it's just, it's just like my whole life. She's been my inspiration. You know, most of the things I have, I got from her. So yeah, definitely my mom. I like that you both said your moms. Your moms will be proud listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> and uh, if you're sitting down, when as soon as we're done with this podcast, you're going to get a snack. What's the snack? What's for snack time? Ah. Uh, that's a hard question, man. I like food. I like to eat. <laughs> uh, snack, man. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Come on, I got to answer. I got to just need one uh, snack. The other snack won't be hurt. It, right, it, won't, right, it won't have its feelings hurt. I'll just, I'll just go, I'll just go with fruit. I'll just go with pineapples. Cause I like fruit. Pineapples. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I, I'm like thinking like, all right, what's he thinking between M&Ms or Hershey's or, you know, no, he's okay. He's going pineapple. Fruit, fruit, okay. fruit is reliable because it's. All right. Well, I yeah. won't ask you the bonus question of if you had to be stranded on any island, what would it be? Because clearly it would be Hawaii for you can eat all the pineapples. <laughs> After you got to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. That was rapid fire with uh, Emmanuel. On, oh God, I forgot. Onuama, Emmanuel Onuama and Cam Shockley. Okay, okay. Sponsored by, you're at here. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, you guys. Can contact Nick Kumar or Mike Kowalski if you'd like to play contact some ads. Me, just Nick Kumar. <laughs> just Nick Kumar. Just Nick Kumar. Um, all right, that's all the time we have, guys. Thanks so much for taking some time to join us. I uh, hope you're all doing well. I hope uh, we're able to see you guys in person soon. Thank you. It was, it was fun being on the podcast. Looking forward to being on it soon again. Yeah. So yes, thanks for thanks for having us. Not man. a problem. Looking forward to seeing you guys on the basketball court soon enough here. So it'll be it'll be nice when we get to see that again. Getting there.
So we no. are. We're taking some baby steps. We're taking some steps. You know, that's all we can ask for right now. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> So you've been listening to the Inside Columbia Basketball Podcast presented by Vandewater for Kyle McChristian on Mike Kowalski. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. See you soon. Happy birthday, birthday boy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs>